like the Dean, this is also one of my favorite philanthropic events. And the reason why is, is two reasons. One is connection and the other is impact. And for donors, connection and impact are related in that we have the opportunity to meet the scholarship, uh, the, the recipient of our scholarship. As I was preparing for this talk, I was reflecting on the comments from last year's speaker. And I recall him saying to the audience, thank you for giving, give more. And in fact, that was a fair thing to ask because we were in the middle of our Leading Together campaign. And I, I'm thinking that, you know, money and gifts, of course, are crucial. But giving more doesn't just refer to money. So this year, I'm going to ask the donors in the room to give something else. And this is something that is just as important, in my opinion, as your scholarship donations, and in many ways is more meaningful, valuable, and precious. I'm going to ask the scholarship donors to give your time. Time to, be an, a, a, time to be a resource and possibly even a mentor to the scholarship recipients in this room. And to the students, I'm going to ask you to do something as well tonight. I, it is your job to take the first step in building a relationship with your scholarship donor. I often speak to lawyers, law students, and entrepreneurs about mentorship. Everyone wants a mentor, and everyone needs a mentor. But few realize that mentors are not given to you. Mentors are something that you must create yourself. Every donor in this room is impressive and has the opportunity to assist you through their knowledge, experience, and network. So I ask you, and I urge you today, to start building a relationship with your donor. But how do you do that? You're probably thinking, what do I have to talk to this older person, or I should say donor, in my case, <laughs> about? Well, I'm going to actually tell you a secret. I'm going to tell you tonight a very easy way to do that. But before I do, I want to tell you a story to illustrate the power of networking and relationships. I want to take you back to the early days of LinkedIn. This was May 2003. LinkedIn was about five employees. And I was the company's first lawyer. And I was in a Starbucks in Mountain View, California with Reed Hoffman. And Reed is one of the founders of LinkedIn and is currently the company's chairman. Reed was explaining to me the general concept behind LinkedIn. And to do this, he talked to me about a book that many of you may be aware of. It's called The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. And in The Tipping Point, Gladwell explains that we are all connected to people through degrees of connection. So I'm connected to Jane, my scholarship recipient, by one degree, because I know her. Jane is actually connected to Reed Hoffman and all of the other people in my network by two degrees. And that's a very powerful thing. One of the fa in fact, one of the things that I've realized in my own life is that most of the opportunities, the professional opportunities, come from your second degree. For students, that means jobs and internships. So what does that mean for the students here tonight? It means that creating and building relationships with successful people throughout your life is vital to your success. I'm not saying that the donors here tonight will become your mentors, but this is an excellent opportunity for you to start cultivating the important life skills of building professional relationships. I also urge you to start thinking when you meet someone new, especially in a setting like this, someone who's going to become your first degree connection, that you're not just meeting them, but you're creating the opportunity to meet their network, which is very powerful. So let me get back to the initial question I raised to the students, which is, how do I do this? How do I begin to build a relationship with my donor? My advice to you 
is that you take the small step tonight of just asking your scholarship donor to tell you a little bit about the scholarship. How did this come to, come to be, this scholarship? And tell me a little bit about the person who it was named after. This actually happened to me without me prompting it to happen at my first scholarship dinner. Genevieve Have was my uh, scholarship recipient for a scholarship that I funded in honor of my father. And when she did this, when she asked me about my dad, it had a very powerful impact on me. I still remember her asking me with true curiosity and interest, tell me about your dad. What was he like? Genevieve stayed in touch with me and she actually ended up coming to San Francisco the following year. And I was able to invite her to attend a dinner with me where I was the guest of John Danes. John is on the board of trustees of Washington University and has actually become a mentor to me and is one of the reasons I'm in this room tonight. I remember watching Genevieve and feeling how enormously gratifying it was to see that she was now building a relationship with someone who was important to me. And I also remember thinking how much I wished I would have been able to meet someone like John when I was a student. As we talk about the people this evening who inspired us to create these scholarships, I'd like to take a moment to honor their memory. For me, this is my father and my freshman year roommate, Bob. I also want to thank my fellow scholarship donors for keeping memories of their friends and loved ones alive in such a beautiful and meaningful way. And above all, thank you for being here today and sharing your time with our students. Thank you.